<laughs> All right. Does anybody need any reminder sheets? We're still on Jesus part three, but I figure it's been a couple few weeks. So anybody want one for tonight? All right. I didn't want to give you one anyway. I wanted to give you one. <laughs> Good evening, good evening. Good evening. How's everybody? Good. Okay. Well, let's start with a prayer time. I want to mention a couple and then y'all can add any others that we want to lift up tonight. <clears throat> we want to pray for uh, Jordan McDuffie. Uh, he's been having fevers a lot and then they got him on, I can't exactly remember what she said, it's bacterial. So, something bacterial, it seems like. But anyway, we want to remember him. And Joyce Hilliard is Linda Cheek's sister um, at the hospital in Chapel Hill. Um, she had fallen and hit her head a little bit ago, and it was in a wreck not too long ago, and so she's recovering. Um, you got any any more specific than that? Joyce Hilliard okay. is Linda Cheek. And then... Um, Doreen Roller, somebody that Kenny works with, was having surgery for intestinal blockage today. So, um, we went well, recovering. Yes. And then I got a text from Ann Moody this, this afternoon. Uh, she's recovering from vertigo again. She had it not too awful long ago, but it knocks her out of commission for a couple days there. So, um, we want to remember Miss Ann. Um, definitely want to lift up the Ukraine situation still. Um, what else? Anybody else in particular you want us to, to pray for this evening? My mom's recovering from a UTI. Oh, mercy. So she seems like every other week she's having one. And my dad as well had a, was in the hospital last week with UTI and, um, Her name is Linda. Linda. UTIs can play a, a trick on you, can't they? Yes. That's true. Sure. That's my, my dad was talking out of his head for, and kind of still was even a few days later, so it's kind of scary. Anybody else? We're, we're traveling tomorrow, so this keeps us shielded. Shielded from danger? Shielded? Yeah. Much needed a couple days off. Hear that. All right. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we can gather together and to study your word together and to pray together and fellowship together and worship together. And just, just live out our Christian lives together. Uh, we know that's how you intended it for us to, to do life together. And so I, I'm thankful for these who, who come out on Wednesdays and, and Sundays and are, are active in the life of the church. Um, I just I pray that you would uh, be with each and every one of them. Uh, those of us who are here, we pray that you would help us to feel your presence right now. Uh, those who are watching, those who will watch, just our church family in general, uh, we pray for blessings. And we pray for um, just an awareness of your presence, an awareness of how you're working. Um, pray for growing faith, growing maturity, growing understanding. Um, Lord, we pray for these on our prayer list tonight, but especially we want to lift up uh, Linda, and she's recovering from her UTI. And my dad as well, recovering from a UTI, and other, other issues for him as well. Uh, we pray for... Um, Mark and Angela and Mary as they travel, that you would keep them safe as they travel and help them to have a, a safe, fun, relaxing trip. 
And we pray for Ann as she's recovering from vertigo. We just pray that you would help her world to stop spinning and help her to settle her stomach and be able to get back to her normal routine soon and very soon. Uh, we pray for Doreen Roller. We thank you that her surgery went well, but we pray for continued healing and we pray for her recovery through this. Uh, we pray for Joyce Hilliard and uh, that she would, um, that, that they would figure out exactly what all is going on with her, but that, that you would help her to recover and help her to resume, get home soon and resume her normal activities as well. And we pray for Jordan and his family. I know when, when your child's sick and have these kind of fevers that it's very stressful for the family. And so I just pray for peace uh, for Kathy and Daniel and pray for healing for him. And um, we pray for the whole uh, Ukraine, Russia thing. And we're just, just outraging, outrageous uh, that this is still going on and that so many lives have been killed and injured and displaced and uh, just in this horrible, horrible situation, Lord, we pray for we pray for your your protection over the people of Ukraine in this attack. We pray for uh, their leaders. We pray for uh, the leaders of Russia that, that you would change their hearts and change their minds, uh, that you would change their agendas right now, even even in these moments, that it would all change. We pray that you would make their weapons futile make their weapons um, useless in, in this attack. And definitely pray for all the people who have been impacted so so drastically by, by this. Um, we, we pray for healing, we pray for comfort, we pray for peace. We pray that, that this would be an opportunity for, for Christians and for you to minister in the lives of hurting people, that this would be a time of, of witness for your care a witness for your love, a witness for your power in their lives. Lord, we, we thank you for the Easter season that we just celebrated. Now we know fully that, that the resurrection is what makes our, our faith real. It's what makes our, uh, our whole system of, of belief and system of behavior and system of church. Um, that's why it's even here. If Jesus hadn't uh, raised from the dead, then it would have all been, it had all just gone away. Uh, but you, Jesus, demonstrated that you are God when you had the power to defeat death uh, and rose from the dead. So we, we thank you for uh, the eyewitness testimony that we have of your resurrection that proves who you are. We thank you for uh, the prophecies and the scripture that, that helps us to have a better understanding of your redemptive plan uh, even though the people of, of, of that day when Jesus was actually making that sacrifice didn't understand, didn't want to see that kind of Savior, Lord, help us to see our need for that kind of Savior, that, that you didn't just come to free people from um, physical harm, physical um, physical life there, then and there in the Roman Empire, but that you came to, to forgive our sin, to, to free us from um, from death. And so we thank you for your bigger plan, bigger than any of us could have ever imagined or dreamed of. And we thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to, to go through with that plan, that you sacrificed your life for us. Uh, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And we are so very thankful. So this evening, Lord, I pray that you would just be here with us. Help us to feel your presence. Help us to feel the power of the Holy Spirit working in our midst. And we surrender our hearts, we surrender our minds, we surrender our time to you this evening and pray that as we look at scripture that, that you would speak to our hearts and minds and that you would give us an even deeper appreciation uh, of who you are and a deeper connection with you. And we will praise your holy name for your goodness and your grace and speak to our hearts tonight. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right, so we're going back to our doctrinal study. We're in the doctrine of Jesus. We've already covered uh, the doctrine of the Bible. We've covered the doctrine of God the Father. Uh, we do these doctrinal studies to uh, to get a, a more 
complete understanding of important topics. So it's not just uh, a, a passage study. It, it's looking at the whole Bible to get a big picture, a big godly perspective of these important themes, such as the Bible and God the Father and Jesus and such. And so we've been looking at Jesus for a while now. We, we talked about uh, some of his names. We talked about how there's power in his name. Uh, we looked at his his life before his incarnation. We looked at his, uh, his life on earth and ministry on earth. We talked about what he's doing ever since his resurrection and his ascension and still today. Uh, and then we, we went into a section uh, that helps us to get to know Jesus better. We, we talked about how Jesus is fully God and fully man. And so we're going to break that down. We started by talking about how Jesus is is fully God. How do we know that Jesus is God? And Jesus said on numerous occasions that he's God. Uh, other people that were close to him said that he's God. Uh, he was worshiped as God. Uh, he did what only God could do. And so then we're looking at more evidence uh, that supports Jesus' claims to be God. And uh, the first evidence that we've been looking at is uh, fulfillment of prophecy. And we've already talked about a lot of how Jesus fulfilled the prophecy uh, that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, a descendant of Abraham, from the tribe of Judah, from the house of David, born in Bethlehem, taken to <coughs> Egypt, uh, that Herod would kill the babies uh, surrounding that situation, uh, that Jesus would be anointed by the Holy Spirit, and uh, that Jesus would be heralded by the messenger of the Lord, John the Baptist, uh, that he would perform miracles, that he would preach good news, that he would minister in Galilee, that he would cleanse the temple, that he would enter Jerusalem as a king riding on a donkey, that he would be rejected by the Jewish people, uh, that he would die a humiliating death involving rejection, betrayal, uh, being sold for 30 pieces of silver, silence before his accusers, being mocked, and being beaten. And so let's pick up where we left off. Uh, looking at more prophecies uh, that indicated that the Messiah would die a humiliating death uh, that included being spat upon. Isaiah 50, verse 6. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. And then Matthew 27, 30. They spit on him. And he took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. Now that, just the, 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 uh, the specificity, that a word specific, just how specific these prophecies are. I mean, who would think of putting a prophecy hundreds and hundreds of years before the Messiah that he would be spat upon? And yet that's exactly what happened. Um, prophecy that his uh, hands and feet would be pierced. Psalm twenty-two, sixteen: dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Matthew 27, 31, after they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Uh, it, it amazes me that scripture gives so little detail about the process of crucifixion. I mean, that's... Um, if you just didn't know what crucifixion was, you would gloss over that like it was nothing, and they crucified him. But we, we do know what crucifixion entailed, that it was torturous. It was meant to prolong agony and prolong uh, the period before death. If they wanted to kill somebody instantly, they could have done it a different way, but that, it wasn't about that. It was about taking the person's whole identity away. And then once they uh, put naked up on that cross and, and, and made where they couldn't breathe and their, their hands and their feet pierced, and once they died, they would be thrown in the trash heap. They wouldn't be allowed a burial normally uh, unless somebody had enough money to, to, um, to pay off an official to get the body. They would be thrown in the trash heap as if they never even existed. And so Jesus, that, that whole prophecy that he would be pierced indicating that he would be crucified is uh, unreal. Um, the prophecy uh, that um, he would be crucified or killed with thieves or with criminals. Um, 
Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So he, he would be amongst the transgressors in his death. Matthew 27, 38. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. And the prophecy that he would pray for his persecutors or pray for, uh, for the world, pray for people responsible for this. Uh, Isaiah 53, 12 again. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great. He will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life into death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He, he was praying for it. It was prophesied that he would do that. You remember there, as he was being crucified, what Jesus said, Matthew 23, 34, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And can you even imagine that? They, they knew what they were doing. They, not, they might not have known the eternal consequences and the eternal redemptive plan behind it all, but they knew uh, that they were killing him. They, they knew that they were torturing him, and yet he's praying for God to forgive them. Uh, the prophecy uh, that his side would be pierced, or that he would be pierced, uh, Zechariah 12, 10, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. So they, the prophecy that he would be pierced. In John 19, 34, instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. Prophecy of being given gall and vinegar to drink. Psalm 69, 21, they put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. Matthew 27, 34. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. In Luke 23, 36 and 37, the, soldier, the soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. So that's, that's another detail. <laughs> Why would you prophesy that ahead of time? Uh, and it's just amazing to me. That the Messiah would have no broken bones. Psalm 34, 20, he protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Uh, John 19, 31 to 36, we, we see that uh, they were trying to speed up uh, the, the death of these guys on the crosses because it was the Passover and they were, and Sabbath was coming, and so they ordered for the legs of the people on the cross to be broken so that they couldn't push themselves up to get a breath so that they would suffocate and die quicker. Uh, but when they came to Jesus, he was already dead, and so they didn't break his bones. They pierced his side instead, but the, the prophecy that his bones wouldn't be broken. Prophecy that he would be buried in a rich man's tomb, Isaiah 53, 9. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Matthew 27, 57 to 59, who, which rich man's grave was he buried in? Joseph of Arimathea uh, allowed him to be buried in a tomb that he had just bought. Um, casting lots for his garments. Psalm 22, 18. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. John 19, 23 and 24, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. <laughs> the, the, the specific tone of these prophecies. And it was prophesied 
though it sure seemed like nobody in the, in the realm there understood it, it was prophesied that he would rise from the dead. Psalm 16.10, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. Mark 16.6, don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Acts 2.31 Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. And so it was, it was prophesied ahead of time, although... Uh, it is clear that even when Jesus was telling his disciples on their way to Jerusalem that that would happen, they didn't get it. And they, they weren't, and that Friday after he was crucified, they weren't anticipating him to come back. They thought it was over. They, he, they were hiding out in the, that upstairs room, scared to death for their own lives. And if they got Jesus, they might come for them too. They weren't, they weren't looking for Jesus to be resurrected. And even though he had pretty much flat out told them that language um, days before that. And it was prophesied that he would ascend into heaven. Uh, Psalm 68, 18. When you ascended on high, you led captives in your train. You received gifts from men, even from the rebellious, that you, O Lord God, might dwell there. Acts 1, 9. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight, and prophesied that the Messiah would sit down at the right hand of God. Uh, Psalm 110.1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. In Hebrews 1.3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And that is where he is now, at the right hand of God, uh, ruling the universe and, and, and sustaining the universe. So some people, uh, I don't know what time it is, but let me get through one more page. I'll try to be quick. Some people called this fulfillment of prophecy a statistical accident. He just happened uh, to be born in Bethlehem, or he just happened to be of David's line. And there are two answers to that argument. First, these predictions were more than just a matter of chance. He just happened to make a blind man see. He just happened to rise again from the dead. That's beyond statistical probability. Uh, the second answer is the large number of prophecies that were fulfilled. Peter Stoner, in his book Science Speaks, has calculated the mathematical probability of even eight of these prophecies being fulfilled by one man. And so uh, he said, We find that the chance that any man might have lived down to the present time and fulfilled all eight prophecies is one in 10 to the 17th power. So I know that's, I never understood that language when I was doing math in school, uh, but that's a one with 17 zeros behind it. So um, it's not 100, it's not 100,000, it's not 100 million, it's not 100 billion, it's not 100 trillion, it's whatever comes after trillion. One trillion. It's uh, one, and 100 quadrillionth of a chance um, in order for us to be able to comprehend that staggering probability stoner then illustrates about this he says uh, we take 10 to the 17th power silver dollars and lay them on the face of texas they will cover all of the state two feet deep now mark one of the silver dollars and stir the whole mass thoroughly all over the state. Blindfold a man and tell him that he can travel as far as he wishes, but he must pick up one silver dollar and say that this is the right one. What chance would he have of getting the right one? Just the same chance that the prophets would have had 
of, of writing these eight prophecies and having them all come true in any one man from their day to the present time, providing they were wrote, that they wrote in their own wisdom. So you think you can do that? You think you can find a silver dollar with an X on it when you're blindfolded in the whole state of Texas that two feet deep worth of silver dollars? Um, and that's just the fulfillment of eight prophecies. He actually fulfilled more than 300 specific prophecies of, of his life from the Old Testament. So what are the probabilities of one person fulfilling more than 300 prophecies? Well, instead of picking out a single silver dollar in Texas, uh, it would be the chance of your randomly picking out a single atom from all the atoms in the universe and having it be the right one that was marked with an X. Jesus is the Messiah. He is the only possible uh, candidate for that role uh, by the prophecies that he fulfilled. And so that is evidence that Jesus is God. That's, um, I, I just find that amazing, absolutely amazing. So next week, uh, we'll look at another form of evidence that proves that Jesus was God, uh, is God, and that is his miracles. And then if we get to it, uh, we'll look at the third evidence uh, which is his resurrection. And so that's where we are. Any thoughts or comments or uh, words of wisdom or anything you'd like to share uh, before we close? All right, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for, uh, we're, we're really, really, really blessed in that, that although it would have been amazing to live during the time that Jesus walked this earth. My guess is that we probably would have been just as hard-hearted and just as hard-headed and just as oblivious as the people who were living during that day. And that, that God in the flesh was walking in their midst and doing miracles and fulfilling prophecies and they missed it. And worse than that, they put him to death. And so we're thankful that we have the benefit of being on this side of the resurrection. And we're thankful for the eyewitness testimony uh, of all those who saw Jesus in the flesh after he had been crucified and buried, but fully alive. And we thank you for uh, just the miracle of how, how those gospels were preserved through the ages and how it all came together to become our Bible. And so we thank you for uh, this evidence that, that we get to uh, consider that maybe the people of that day didn't, didn't have yet. And so we thank you, Lord. And we acknowledge in faith and in trust that Jesus is God, God the Son. So we thank you, Lord, for, for dying for us and rising for us and living again for us and letting us have the fullness of life as well. We thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you all very much. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Uh, let me throw one more thing out. And I, I know the odds are slim, but I got a text from Myra Hargis. Are you all familiar with Myra? Uh, she and her husband are moving from here in Bear Creek to Ashboro. And they're having some difficulty getting packed up and getting loaded up and are looking for some help. And so I'm, um, I'm trying to put together a crew that can go and help them to uh, load some boxes and load the trailer. And so if you have some time over the next, they have to be out by the 30th. So that's uh, the rest of this week and next week and they have to be out. So uh, if you have some time that you might can spare, uh, to help them, uh, let me know or let her know directly. And um, if a group of us can go on a, on a convenient day to kind of knock a lot of it out at once, that would be great too. So uh, look at your calendars and if that's something you might get help with, let me know. All right. Have a good one.